Hey, hey, welcome to Jessica Stories. I'm Jessica Carney, and I will be your host. This is a Christian podcast to remind you that God is in the details of your daily life and that we can always find a way to see the silver lining in all of life's experiences. I am so determined to help remind you of your divine worth. Hello, welcome my friends. Oh my golly, guess where the podcast is coming to you today? From inside my car, on the side of a road next to a mountain in Idaho, almost Montana. Today we're going to West Yellowstone and into Yellowstone Park because it opened yesterday. How fantastic, right? Well, my dearies, what in the world is adding light to your life? I ask you every week because it's so important that we recognize the things that add light to our life. What do I mean by that? Add light means it's going to help us feel more peace, more joy, closer to our Savior Jesus Christ. It's going to help us feel like our more true, best, authentic selves. It's going to energize us. It's going to send us forward into a direction where we can make better choices and add more light to this world. Because honestly, what does this world need? It needs your light. It really does. And so if your light is dim right now, or it's almost gone out because you haven't taken the time to learn how to nourish your light, your God-given light, then you can't share it with other people. (laughs) So what is adding light to your life? Have you been specific about doing things this last week that add light to your life? For me, um, (laughs) I'm now living on the road and I've spent the last five months of my life planning for this and now I'm in it. And a lot of the things I was doing previous that added light to my life are not really working right now. (laughs) So I've had to find some new ways to nourish my spirit and open my heart and feel close to God and feel his light infused in my life. And so something I've been doing is every morning I've taken Reagan, Reagan on a walk and I've put on my headphones. I have this headband that has headphones implanted in it because all earphones hurt my ears. <laughs> I guess I have ultra tender ears or something. But anyway, so I wear my little headband with earphones and I listen to my favorite calming music and I speak to God as I walk in nature. And that has added tremendous light into my life. Out of all the days that I have done it, my attitude has been so much better than the two days I didn't do it. It is a stark difference. (laughs) So I'm going to keep doing that because it brings me joy. It helps me feel peace. It helps me see God in the details of my life. So what is adding light to your life? You may now answer out loud. (laughs) (laughs) no but honestly like really articulate it like press pause and say this is adding light to my life (laughs) all right what is Reagan up to let me tell you yesterday on our walk we went near Moose Creek in Island Park and the night before we had been there and seen a moose and I was hoping we'd see another moose alas I think Reagan's too loud because she just bounds through the forest and jingles and scares all the wildlife away but Along her adventure, uh, she got into something, I'm not quite sure what, but when we got back to the trailer, that dog smelt like dead fish. (laughs) It was awful. So bad. When we got back from rafting the Box Canyon, (laughs) our trailer was, it was like a fish house. It was very sad. So I washed her in the trailer shower. She got hair everywhere, and I didn't know where her shampoo was, so she had my shampoo. She smelled quite good, but there is still like a slight hint of dead fish, which is a little alarming. I'm hopefully hoping it will just hopeling. That's a funny word. I am hopeling <laughs> that this smell will just disappear. Disappear. I cannot speak. It's early morning. I'm sorry, friends. Learning and figuring out when to do the podcast is is a wonderful challenge and experience, and I'm excited to conquer this. But that's what Reagan's been up to. Now, a little bit of information about this last week. It was our first official week on the road. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm very singy this morning. Clearly, if you get me first thing in the morning, I'm going to sing to you because my brain can only function creating musicality. <laughs> But we were in Island Park, Idaho, and that's where Ben and I met. I was up there performing at a dinner house, dinner house, a dinner theater playhouse, and he was building cabins. He had just got off a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and his parents were living in Island Park. So he was there for the summer working, and alas, our lives connected, and that's where we met each other, and we started dating, and yeah been a long time now I think we're going on 16 years this year this September what so that's what we did we rafted the Henry's Fork of the Snake River at three different sections and we had a great time it was fantastic but the mosquitoes were savage they were awful Ugh. I guess everything has opposition don't I always say it our opposition was mosquitoes now today's little bit of a story is something that happened this last week. <laughs> so um, one of the exciting things that we're doing on this trip is we are trying to raft a lot of rivers. Ben, his family, his dad loved river rafting and took Ben river rafting from a young age. He was kind of a scaredy cat when he was little, but once he got into his teenage, teenage years, he had a lot of fun on the river and they would raft and they'd fish and it was just a really awesome experience. So we are hoping to get on rivers when fly hatches are occurring. And when that happens, the fishing is superb. So they say, I am not a fisherman. I can fish. I don't love fishing, honestly. I mean, I, it's really fun to watch people fish. I love like pulling the fish in with a net and unhooking it. Once I've caught one fish, I'm just thrilled. And not because I feel like bad for the fish or anything. I just am like, oh, my work is done. I, I need to do no more. But um, my husband loves fishing. And we are hoping to see some really amazing fishing as different fly hatches occur. Now, with this said, if the flies are hatching out of their little lava whatever's there's a word. I don't know what it is. Sorry. That means we are going to be on rivers with a ton of bugs. And some of these bugs are huge. The size of your pinky finger. To me, that is too big for a bug to be. I do not love bugs, especially ones that fly. Because if it's just crawling on the ground or even like, you know, slithering itself, you can run away. But if it flies, it comes to you and it lands on you and I hate it so much. <laughs> so I knew that there's a really high chance that a bug is going to land on me and it could be a very large bug. So I've been doing some mind work because I know that I can respond dramatically <laughs> to things. I know that's really hard to imagine me be dramatic. But friends, sometimes it happens when alarming things happen to Jessica Carney. I sometimes scream. I know that's so hard to imagine, but it does happen. And I also understand that the way I respond and the energy I put out greatly impacts the energy of my household. And while that sometimes feels like a heavy burden to carry... I also don't want to alarm other people or to make everyone else feel unhappy because we are living in a very small space and I would love to create peaceful, wonderful energies for us to live in. That said, I have done work in my mind thinking about a bug, a large bug, landing upon my face or my chest or my bare skin, and I have figured a way that I would respond to this. Now, in the past, I can tell you what I did in the past. When I lived here in Island Park, there are pine beetles in Island Park, and they are ugly. They are mm, about, well, at least I have quite large fingers, <laughs> but it's about half the size of my pinky, but they're more bulbous, <laughs> and they fly, and they're amber-colored. Now, I had the opportunity to speak at church to quite a large congregation 
And I was speaking when I lived here as a student and I'm giving this talk and I'm very energetic and happy and joyful. And I'm looking over to the right side of the congregation where my, my roommates are sitting and they are all got wide eyes and then they're kind of sniggering. And I'm like, what the heck are you sniggering at? I am giving a spiritual talk. You are not helping. You're supposed to be supportive. And I'm feeling frustrated while I'm still giving my peppy message while out the corner of my right eye, I see amber wings flickering. And then I feel like wings brush against my head. And then everything stops. (laughs) Everything stops. I'm standing there at the pulpit with probably a thousand people because this congregation has so many visitors in the summer there's so many people there so there's all of these people and everything goes quiet and my focus goes to this tiny spot on the right of my head the flickering wings and I knew what it was because the day before I had cleaned out the laundromat because that was my daytime job that's right I was a maid in the morning an actress at night so glamorous and I had seen a lot of pine beetles in the shower and laundry room and I had to kill them and suddenly I go "Ah!" and I (laughs) my hands come up and they shake around my head and I waft my head side to side and then I see the bug take off and then fly towards the congregation and I have some sort of reaction like "Ah!" Anyway, as we turn to the New Testament, (laughs) I just go on with my talk and I just plow through until it's done and I sit down and I'm pretty sure the color of my skin was a fluorescent color of sorts. Now, because that was my experience before and I have been rather terrified since of the pine beetle. I thought, okay, there's just a really good chance pine beetles are going to land on me, or at least when we're on a river, I'm going to have salmon flies, all sorts of humongous flies that are fluttering around me. And however I respond, it's going to be the way that my kids are going to start responding. So I went into the mind of Jessica and I imagined a bug landing on my cheek. That's how I imagined it, to land on my cheek with its gross legs walking at my cheek and its giant wings. And I imagined myself thinking, hmm, there's a bug on my cheek. And then I take a breath. There's a bug on my cheek. Interesting. And then I get my hand and I just waft it away. And then the bug would fly away and I'd have a moment to breathe and regain myself because this is probably going to happen many times. Well, friends, clearly I am so inspired (laughs) because it happened. It happened on Saturday. Oh no, Sunday. Oh goodness gracious. We're on a bike ride in Island Park. We are going and it's so lovely. The sun is setting. It's warm. It's gorgeous. The just the feeling of the air flowing past us. We're in a line. Ben's got the GoPro on. He's capturing our family moment. It's as if in the background they're playing some happy music and we're like, oh, it's wonderful. Let's race. Yay. Off we go. It's fantastic. It's everything you dream of a Sunday afternoon evening bike ride to be. And then, and then just out of nowhere, I'm bike riding and this pine beetle, the pine beetle, flies up from the road I'm on into my chest and lays upon my breast. Yes, the pine beetle went through my top upon my breast and I go ah! and I stop and I think there's a pine beetle on my breast there's a pine beetle on my breast and Ben's like are you okay and I'm like there's a pine beetle on my breast and he's like oh <laughs> and I just go in I take my breath I've been there before I've already done this mentally Jessica you can do it physically I lift up my shirt from the bottom just exposing myself to all of nature, lift it high, 
And then it just flew away. It just flew away. I was so grateful. And then I just sat there and took a few deep breaths. And then I said to the boys, I was like, I already did this in my mind. Look how good I was. Look how calm I was. Isn't this amazing? And I needed all the accolades and compliments possible because that makes me happy. But the point of this story is there is opposition in all things. And I, in that moment, had the opposition of a pine beetle landing upon my breast. And that was alarming and very uncomfortable. But the thing is, I was able to handle it so much better because I had already done the work in my mind. Now, when I was much, much younger, so a teenager, <laughs> I guess it's well, it quite a long time ago. That was a while ago now. I'm 35. I think I'm 35. Yes. No? Golly. I think I'm 35. I was born in 85. Yes, maybe. Oh, you do the math. But back then, I used to be like, let's just be positive. And I would just think everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. And then when everything was not fine, I'd be like, ah, but I was positive. Well, you know what? That's just stupid, darling little Jess, because life innately has opposition. So it's less about all of your circumstances being fine, good, going well. And it's more about having the tools so that you can work through your thoughts and your feelings about the situations so that they can put you in a place where you can have positive energy, where you can see the good, you can see the lessons, you can see the silver lining, and you can move forward and grow from the experience. And now, I don't think, oh, everything's going to go perfect. I think, okay, I'm going to be living in a trailer and doing a lot of rafting on rivers where there's going to be a bunch of flies and bugs. And I don't like flies and bugs. So there's a huge chance that they're going to land on me. Well, I can have that happen and then just be miserable and angry and frustrated about this. Or I can figure out how I'm going to respond differently so that it doesn't ruin my day or ruin my week or ruin my entire summer. Okay, your life already has opposition in it. There are things you're doing that have opposition. Maybe your health is not good. Maybe you have a relationship at work that is really challenging. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe you are experiencing some really intense mental health challenges. Whatever it is, you have opposition. Look at the opposition and the things that are most likely going to occur, the circumstances that are most likely going to come from it, and then see yourself responding to them in a way that will help you feel light, that will help you seek after a positive energy, that will help you see the good and learn and grow from it. Right now, currently in America, there is so much challenge. And it almost seems like we are consumed in darkness as racism is so very real right now. And I think this message can help us change the course of how we see each other and in a way that we can come to understand each other, to listen to each other, to learn from each other and to make space for all the voices, for all the different people that live in this country but that live in the world. And so as I have been reading and learning about different stories and perspectives of people who have different color skins as I do, who have different heritages, who come from different countries, who have different cultures, I am imagining myself listening before judging, learning before deciding what their experience means. I am seeing myself speak less and ask more questions so that I can develop greater understanding. And perhaps that's something you can do too. If we are to create change, then we have to see ourselves act differently when we hear about discrimination 
racism, people being excluded, stories being erased. And the way we do that is we do it mentally first. We start to imagine those scenarios and imagine ourselves acting differently. Choosing to care, choosing to listen, choosing to acknowledge that we don't know best, that we don't know everything, that there is so much more to learn. And so I hope that my silly story about a pine beetle flying into my breast will help you remember that you can do some of the work mentally right now about the opposition you will encounter later today, tomorrow, this week. The opposition often brings up uncomfortable feelings. It's often something that you don't want to sit in. But if you've already done the mental work, it will be so much easier for you to make a new choice, to make the choice that you would want to make so that you can reap the rewards of growing into that more glorious and expanded version that God designed you to be. Thank you so much for listening. I want to let you know that I have a free class for you. It's all about positive energy, how to develop the positive thoughts so that you can honestly fuel your life with light, with God's light, and turn up to each day with your best self. It is at thetrueconfidencecourse.com and it's a free class just for you. Go and enjoy it. Take care, friends.